From Hollywood, it's time now for... Sonny Dollar. Good morning, Mr. Dollar. I do hope I didn't wake you up. I was already up, Mrs. Preeny. Mrs. Pre... Well, how did you know? I recognized your voice. What can I do for you? Well, I... I know you'll think me terribly forward, but I have to see you, Mr. Dollar. Right away. All right, I'm in room 22. Come on up. Oh, good heavens, I couldn't possibly do that. After all, you're a man, and I'm... And you're a woman. Mrs. Preeny, I'm sure you haven't come into town this morning to play footsie. So let's both relax and forget about the fact that... This is a small town, Mr. Dollar, and you know how people talk here. Yeah, I know. And what are they talking about this morning? Well, the murder, I suppose. And, Mr. Dollar, I've got to see you right away. I've done a horrible thing, and I'm ready to confess. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Shady Lane, Vermont... To the Home Office, Star Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Shady Lane matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 10, 55 cents. A cup of coffee for myself and a pot of tea for Mrs. Sarah Preeny. She considered the hotel lunchroom an innocent enough place, and I met her there five minutes after she phoned my room. It was Mrs. Preeny who brought me into the case by writing the anonymous letter to the insurance company. Ellen Bates, a farm wife with no known enemies, had been shot to death. Mrs. Preeny, her best friend, had implied in the letter that Ellen's own husband, Ben, was guilty. And I was inclined to agree with her. Ben was the beneficiary of Ellen's $10,000 life insurance policy. There seemed to be no other motive, unless Mrs. Preeny was about to confess one. She didn't do it, Mr. Dollar. Who didn't do what? That girl. She didn't warm the teapot. For two cents, I'd send it back and make her do it right. Well, I'm a little pressed for time, Mrs. Preeny. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to do it, really. I just said that. I, I wouldn't want to attract attention under the circumstances. You mean the fact that I'm a man and you're a woman, and apparently the twain had an ought to be meeting, in Shady Lane, at least. Well, people will talk, you know. And I didn't want Martin to know. Why not? Well, then he'd want to know why... Of course, I'd have to tell him, and... Well, well, as a matter of fact, Mrs. Preeny, I'd kind of like to know why. Well, it's... Oh, this isn't easy for me to say, you know. Well, let's have a try at it anyway. It's about that letter that I wrote to the insurance company that I didn't sign my name to. Yes? It was a terrible thing to do. Just terrible. In what way? Why, those things I said about Ben. Mr. Bates, I mean insinuating he might have had something to do with Ellen's death, her murder, I mean. You made some fairly definite statements, Mrs. Preeny. They weren't true, Mr. Dollar. But I'm telling you the truth now. I know Ben didn't have anything to do with Ellen's death. Mrs. Preeny, there were some other things you implied to me, too, you know. Yes, about him and Aunt Millie Wells that works at the Shady Lane Cafe. I said they were carrying on before Ellen was killed. I made that up just to hit out at him. Why? I don't know, really. Ellen was wonderful, and I just loved her. But sometimes I'd get to thinking that... Not that my Martin isn't a fine man, you understand. Steady, reliable. You know, you've met him. Oh, yes, I'd say your husband is quite steady and reliable. I didn't want you to think that I was saying anything against him. But... Life on a farm isn't easy for a woman at the best, Mr. Dollar. Sometimes she gets silly notions, I guess. What sort of notions? Oh, a, a woman's human. She wants a little warmth, understanding. That's all. Nothing more. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I think I do. But... Ben Bates, well, he didn't even look at me, didn't see me. 
that's all I wanted. Just for him to look at me. But he didn't do it, Mr. Dollar. Not even once. I left her sitting there in the stark bare wooden booth in the lunchroom, sipping her prim cup of cold tea and trying to hide a red-faced confusion behind the shreds of decent dignity. Constable Bramler was right. Scratch the surface of Shady Lane anywhere and you found a human passion just beneath the skin. Good morning, Constable. Yeah, morning, Mr. Dollar. Sleep well? So-so. How's Grody Hawkins? Still asleep, back there in his cell. He admits stealing that squirrel gun from Ben Bates' mantle the week before Ellen was shot and claims he sold it to Martin Preeny the week after the murder. Yeah, so by his own admission, the gun was in Grody's possession the day of the killing. But Grody claims the gun is rusty and hasn't been fired in years. Yeah, whether it's rusty or not, Grody didn't kill nobody. Have you been out to the Preeny farm yet to pick up the gun? No, figured you might like to do that yourself. You can use my car if you want to. Cost you another three dollars, though. How did you make a living before I came along? It wasn't easy. Traffic tickets, mostly. New turnpikes are going to stop all that, though. Misses the town complete. Along with Ben Bates' farm, huh? Yeah. Too bad they didn't stick to the original survey. Made that place of his worth something, maybe. And it might have saved his wife's life. <laughs> Still beating that dead horse, eh? Oh, Ben Bates was up against the wall. A worthless farm, mortgage for $7,500 to Martin Preeny... A strong sense of moral obligation to pay it off. An invalid wife who would never get well. With a $10,000 policy on her life. Murder ain't in Ben's nature. I've told you. Then whose nature is it in? Mrs. Preeny's, maybe? She came to see me at the hotel a little while ago. You don't say so. She wanted to explain why she'd lied about Ben. Uh-huh. Reckon it was because he wouldn't pay no attention to her. Who told you? Hmm. Figured it out. Reckon Martin ain't too easy a man for a woman to live with. Too straight laced, tight fisted. And Ben right next door that way, fine looking young fella. Her running in all the time, taking things to Ellen, bound to want to be noticed. Yeah, it's the nature of a woman. What about Ellen, Mr. Bramler? She was your niece. What was her nature? <sighs> Ain't so easy to figure your own kin, Mr. Dollar. Reckon it was just her nature to be a victim, kinda. <laughs> I drove slowly through the early morning countryside, lush and green, still moist from the night dew and not yet touched by the heat of day. Farm after farm, snug and smug and safe. But Ellen Bates, a woman who never harmed anyone in her life, had lived on such a farm. Yet a bullet had crashed through the window and found her. I'd left the car parked in the yard and walked on up to the porch. The door opened before I had a chance to... Oh! Oh, good morning, Mrs. Preeny. You surprised me, Mr. Dollar. Is your husband at home? Yes, he's... He's in there working on his accounts. I was just going to take some strawberry preserves to Mrs. Thrasher up the road. She hasn't been feeling too well. Sorry to hear it. You're... You're not going to say anything to Martin about... Well, you know, what about... I wouldn't think of it, Mrs. Preeny. Thank you. I have to take these preserves to Mrs. Thrasher. You just go right on in, Mr. Dollar. Yes, thanks. Mr. Preeny? In here. Come on in. Sorry to bother you this early in the morning. Oh, Mr. Dollar. Just finishing my accounts for the fiscal year. What can I do for you, sir? Well, unless I've been misinformed, you bought an old squirrel gun from Grody Hawkins a while back. That's right. It's hanging there over the fireplace. Quite a bargain, unless he stole it someplace. As a matter of fact, he did. From your neighbor, Ben Bates. Mm. Then I'm out the price. I'll take it over to Ben this afternoon. Mind if I take a look at the gun, Mr. Preeny? I'm trying to check up on Grody's story. No, no, go right ahead. I'll just finish this total while you're at it. Then we'll have time for a chat. He went back to the ledges on the table in front of him, and I reached up and took down the rifle, down from its hooks above the mantel. Grody had told the truth. There was rust in the barrel and breech. The gun hadn't been cleaned nor fired in a long time. The hooks over the fireplace were old and rusted, too. They'd been there for years. And suddenly I knew. Find what you were after, Mr. Dollar? I found more than I was after. I found out who killed Ellen Bates. Grody Hawkins? No. No, not Grody. And not Ben Bates. 
Even though he is named as beneficiary of that $10,000 insurance policy. What do you mean? It was somebody who stood to profit even more than Ben did from that $10,000. Who? Somebody who made a $7,500 loan out of kindness. That alone should have tipped me off, Mr. Preeny. As Jed Bramler says, it wasn't in your nature. My nature? But of course it wasn't kindness. At the time, it was good business because a turnpike was planned that would make the farm worth double the loan. But the road fell through and you were stuck with a worthless farm, unless Ben could get money to pay you. I imagine that's when you started thinking about murder. Are you accusing me of murder, Mr. Dollar? Those hooks over the mantle have been there a long time. Where's the rifle that hung there before you bought this one from Grody Hawkins? There might not have been one. The neighbors will remember. Let me uh, just put down this final total. Well, I had a good year last year. Very good year. I doubt it's going to be that good this year. No regrets, Mr. Dollar. It's like farming. You take risks on drought, frost, insects. Sometimes you make a mistake and lose. I knew I'd made a mistake the second I pulled that trigger. After that, it was just a matter of time. The gun is buried out behind the barn. I'll get my hat. Item 12, $94.35. Incidentals in Shady Lane and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $186.60. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, a diamond, a huge one, the star of Cape Town. A piece of ice that should have been kept on ice. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is written by Les Crutchfield and produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Jeanette Nolan, Forrest Lewis, Shirley Mitchell, Will Wright, Bert Holland, and John Daner. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.